going to talk about the eviction epidemic um, that is, well, continuing. I'm, I'm not even going to say that's coming up. It's continuing. This is a this is going to be a pretty consistent problem uh, as we head into the winter months, though. It doesn't particularly feel like winter. I'm, I'm in the state of Pennsylvania and it's fucking like 60 degree or it was 60 degrees outside. Just nuts. It's crazy. So um, where are we at? So this comes from the uh, once again from the World Socialist website uh wsws.org you got to love that url um and they talk about you know one of the big things in corporate me- or corporate mainstream media like cbs news talked about it and i just i saw it on the nightly news earlier this week is uh the the, the lines at the food bank are are like long and they're crazy and there's people that are hungry and they can't feed their families So, <clears throat> as this is happening, not well, none of the corporate media is really going to address <laughs> the reality of what this is, right? <laughs> they're not going to be. They're not going to be like, well, this is capitalism's fault. This is this is what happens when you when you have a failed state under capitalism and everybody's trying to turn over a buck during a fucking pandemic instead of taking care of each other, right? When a government is more focused on how do we help the pimps, the pimps and, and the and the owners at the banks and and the big corporations rather than the people that voted the, that elected them into office that they are actually supposed to represent. Uh, when they fucking let those people down, what happens under a capitalistic state is you end up with food lines. You end up with one of the the worst depressions this side of the century. 54 million people are facing food insecurity. That's from Feeding America. 54 million people. This country has, what, 330 million people? We've lost uh, just about a percent of um, of people to COVID. 54 million people are going to go hungry. Out of those, how many of those people are going to contract COVID because they're desperate to try to feed their families, to put themselves in dangerous jobs, dangerous positions, uh, panhandling and so on and so forth, trying to get food? Um, they might get COVID or they might pass away without food. How how often is that going to happen? Twenty five thousand eviction cases uh, in North Carolina between July and September, and uh, about fifteen thousand of those were complete. We're looking at between three hundred thousand to four hundred uh, four hundred ten thousand households that won't be able to pay rent in North Carolina, uh, and an additional two hundred forty thousand by January of twenty twenty one. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says there's 11.1 million people unemployed right now and 700,000 new cases of unemployment, new people that are unemployed in America. There is talk of lockdown measures now because the COVID rates are going back up. Go fucking figure because, again, you chose capitalist interests over the over keeping people safe. You knew this was coming. In July, the WHO said this was coming. Asshole comedians sitting in their rooms on live stream said this was fucking coming. Wave two was on its way. Everybody fucking knew that. Doctors called for it. This is what happened in 1918 with the fucking Spanish flu. The second wave was worse than the first. The second wave was what really caused a lot of the fucking problems. We knew this was coming. And what did the leadership do? Across the country, they did nothing to prepare themselves for it. In August, you could have had a plan for education. The American Federation of Teachers had a plan of how to safely reopen schools. Did the states decide to pay attention to the largest teachers union? Fucking no. They were more concerned about getting things back to normal. Let's make it feel like it's back to normal so people will consume like it's back to normal. They will they will go to the malls and they will shop and do the things and all that crap. <clears throat> Crapitalism makes you choose between the so-called economy and your public well-being. And that should never be the choice. 
So now we're talking about another lockdown, right? Oh, sports was another big one. Everybody needed their sports. And um, last week, uh, or maybe earlier this week, time blends into a fucking puddle uh, (laughs) sometimes, doesn't it? But in Philadelphia, they were basically like, we're going to continue playing sports, but uh, we're not going to let our fans into the stadium. That's fucking crazy. Uh, we're not going to do that. That's irresponsible, which yeah, no shit. You shouldn't be letting fans into the stands. Like large gatherings over 10 people is, is not a good idea. And you're like, yeah, no, let's let a 2000 people into a, a, you know, a a stadium because yeah, you know, you know who, you know, who has responsibility and an understanding of personal space is a bunch of drunk people. That's, that's exactly who has the understanding of how far six feet is. Right. Uh, The the same people that go to bars and stand real fucking close and yell in your ear. And it's like, okay, I get it. You were awesome when you were 12. I got whatever, man. Like you peaked early. What do you want me to tell you? Here's another Miller Lite, I guess. (laughs) Like, yeah, those people have a real good understanding of personal space and social responsibility. But we had to have our sports, right? Pittsburgh wasn't going to do that. <laughs> Pittsburgh was like, fuck it. We have the best fans. Let them all in. Brr. Like, you know, like half the fucking Pittsburgh football team <laughs> was at risk of contracting COVID because of irresponsibility. And it's like, how are we just not going to fucking learn, bro? Like, come on. But now they're talking about lockdown measures, right? Like we have a stay at home advisory. Uh, here in Pittsburgh. I don't know how it is in other cities. Feel free to let me know how it is in other cities. Um, you know, uh, leave a comment or, or what have you, like what's going on in your city in terms of stay-at-home measures, in terms of lockdown measures. But they are talking about another lockdown of sorts. Um, but they what they're not talking about is a universal basic income, expanding unemployment, talking about health, look, how do we get health care for people that need health care? How do we take care of people that have COVID-19? Um, but how do we also take care of people that don't have COVID-19, but have equally serious illnesses that if we don't take care of, will exacerbate and will lose even more people in the midst of a pandemic as periphery deaths that are, that are not counted under COVID deaths, right? <clears throat> how do we take care of those people? Again, uh, you knew this was coming and you could have built some kind of uh, healthcare infrastructure. But but nobody did. And I and I yelled about this probably a week ago is uh, or or maybe um, or maybe earlier this week. Again, time is a a, 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 a glob at this point. Uh, but. Yeah, Joe Biden keeps talking about he has a plan, right? That was he he stole Elizabeth Warren's mantra of um of having a plan. And uh where is it? What's your plan? Why aren't you advising fucking governors and mayors of cities to work out a plan? Where was your plan? You were sitting in a fucking basement bunker for for 6 months before the debates doing interviews, telling black people they weren't black unless they voted for them, saying that the black community wasn't diverse, but the Latino community was yelling at black anchors, talking about your, uh, your, your mental health and your dementia, but you weren't coming up with a fucking plan. You keep talking about the plan. What is the plan? It was like, no, 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 I'm going to wait to reveal my plan. When I'm inaugurated, I'll tell you the plan. I know there's a bunch of people dying and we've hit record uh, death tolls with this disease, but but let's all wait. Once I'm officially inaugurated, once this institution has played itself out, I'll fucking tell you what my plan is. <laughs> and then he talks about controlling the virus, right? That's that's his big fucking thing. Is there's like commercial after commercial. I remember uh, there was like you guy, you can't bring the economy back until you control the virus. That's Joe Biden's big thing. It's like you gotta control the virus. Like that's what he wants to do. Which I don't know if you remember in the, in the first debates, he basically said he was the Democratic Party. And based on this, not only is he the Democratic Party, but he's also the human embodiment of science because he's going to control the virus. He's controlling it. 
can you control it so uh, less people fucking die, bro? <laughs> like, can you do that? Because we're two hundred fifty thousand. Scale it fucking back if you're the if you're this human embodiment of science that you claim yourself to be and that you can gain control of the virus. Can you do it a little quicker? <laughs> He has no plans to help out the people. He has no economic plan to help out the people. And I've said this a bunch of different times uh, on this channel. I've said this on various podcasts is, is, is you need to have a public health and an economic plan, especially when you live in a capitalist society like ours. They, they, you have to. And that economic plan has to be able to help people, but they don't have an economic plan to help people because capitalism doesn't give a fuck about people. What it does give a fuck about is the same thing that Joe Biden is going to do, which is bail out Wall Street, bail out the banks, and bail out big corporations. He'll write another fucking check to those people without any goddamn question. There's no plan to help out people, and that's what needs to happen. And and basically what Joe Biden is going to say is, well, if we flood the banks with with money if we flood these corporations with money they'll get america back to work and then that money will get trickled down to the working class right trickle down economics it was pitched by the republicans and now it's the mantra of the neoliberal it's the mantra of the neocons it's the mantra of basically every fucking pro capitalist you know the per, like asshole that wants to sit there and quote Ayn Rand and masturbate in your face at the same time. Like that's that's who <laughs> trickle down. That's what what's what's when in in the history of the world, anytime anybody has proposed any sort of trickle down measures, it's never fucking trickled. It, um, you know what? It has trickled down. I'll take that back. It is it has done exactly what the name suggests. It has trickled down just little droplets like a like a uh, you know someone that has a a, a, a a an enlarged prostate. You just get a little bit of trickle. That's what you get. Just a little couple of droplets. And that's what comes down to the people. Meanwhile, all the money gets fucking stuck to, at the top. So the name is actually very accurate. But that's what Biden's going to fucking do. He's not going to give money directly to uh, to the people in loans. The banks will give out loans and then you can pay them back. You can trickle it back. You can, It's actually not a trickle up. It's a rush up. It's a water. It's a reverse waterfall. That's a better name for this economic system. Then you have Pelosi and Schumer. This is uh, comical to me is uh, Pelosi and Schumer wrote a letter. They wrote a letter to Mitch McConnell uh, talking about doing what's right for this country, right? To help the people do what's right for the country. This is like the ultimate Karen move, right? Like Nancy Pelosi is the ultimate Karen in this situation because she's basically like, I need to speak to the manager of the Republican Party, Mitch McConnell. Where is the manager of the Repub Where is Mitch McConnell and the, and the manager of the Republican Party? Because I have some words. I have some fucking difficult things to say to your face and then that's where it'll end there'll be no action beyond it and i gotta go home and eat my freezer full of ice cream in front of some poor kids and let them know that they're poor because they don't have bootstraps and maybe if their parents worked a little harder they could have ice cream where is the manager of the republican party <laughs> look here's here's the reality is uh, both parties have uh, denied the uh, <clears throat> the cancellation of rents, which needs to happen. There, ne there needs to be a moratorium on evictions. There needs to be a cancellation of rents. Uh, they've denied UBI. Uh, Nancy Pelosi herself came out and said that they're not going to support a UBI. They'll think about some expansions on unemployment insurance, and that's about it. Uh, and and even that, they haven't managed to do at all right like that insurance ran out in july i believe and hasn't come back even though they keep claiming that it fucking will uh what else have they denied Healthcare, uh medicare for all is is not going to be a democrat's platform and if you're wondering why am i not criticizing the republicans about this fucking they they're not going to support this shit 
also the Republicans don't come out and say that they're going to help people. The Republicans are like, this is about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and making sure that the economy is tip top because of you, worker slave. Like that's basically how the Republicans talk. But the Democrats are like, we care about people. Aren't people the best? High fives. And then they go and do exactly the same thing as the fucking Republicans do. That's why I chastise the fucking Democrats a lot more. <clears throat> And because they're not doing all of this, the eviction rates are going up. That means homelessness is going to go up. If homelessness goes up, this virus is going to run rampant. It was running rampant throughout the homeless community all across the country. <coughs> there was one doctor who was trying to help him out. Um, there's probably a bunch of doctors, but there was one doctor in particular. And he was trying to help out the homeless people. And what happened to him? He got arrested outside his own house by the cops because they were like, black people darn doctors. This is crazy. Who said, but are we allowing the blacks to be doctors now? This is not who we are. Who was since when? Martin Luther who? You know, that's basically how that whole interaction went down. And he was just trying to help homeless people. He was giving them tests. He was, he, you know, passing out masks and stuff. Like, you know, I, I mean, I kind of did that too. Is is in the beginning of it? If I saw a homeless person, like I would try to give them an extra mask because I had some extra masks in my car. Uh, <clears throat> here's here's the real kind of shedding of the light uh, within this duopoly, right? Both Pence and Biden have said that there's not going to be a lockdown. Um, Pence, uh, for obvious reasons, because he's like, the, well, America's stronger than the virus. I don't know if you know this, but if you if you believe in capitalism and you pray to the to, to the almighty dollar, if you go to the church, of the, everybody just walk down to your ATMs and light a vigil. Just put some candles down in front of the ATM. And if you pray to the dollar, specifically the one to, to the dollar, uh, everything will be fine. Don't wear a mask. And that's, <laughs> you know, Pence is, but like Pence is a give a shit. They just want these people to to work and they want these people to make uh, the top 1% even more money. That's just, they just want the capitalist machine to keep going. Uh, Biden basically said that he's not shutting down the economy, but he is going to shut down the virus again. We're going to take control of it, you guys. We're going to fucking seize it by the balls. That's what we're going to do. We're going to find this virus's microscopic balls and just fucking seize control of it. And we're going to be like, you let the American people go. <clears throat> There's uh, degrees of restrictions under Biden for small businesses, right? gyms, restaurants, things of that sort. But there are no degrees of restrictions. There's absolutely no restrictions for factories, for plants, for manufacturing, or any of this stuff, right? Which is where the spread of the virus is the most. Once again, proving that Joe Biden does not give two flying fucks about the American people, just like the Republicans don't give two flying fucks about the American people. And if you're going to hold him responsible and if you're going to push him um, to the left, which historically there's never been proof that that'll ever happen. No, no, no politician has ever been able to or no, no citizen has ever been able to push a political party over to the left. You know, you want to know how how the Democratic Party actually moves to the left and legislates on leftist p policies, uh, general strikes, large labor movement shit. That's what happened in 1934, and that's what needs to happen again. I mentioned this last week, and I'm going to fucking mention it again. D d massive general strike, and I it's fucking coming. It's fucking coming. Uh, if you want Joe Biden to move to the left, you should pressure him every single day to cancel rents, moratorium on evictions, UBI, Medicare for all. That's what we need under this. I've been saying this for months and Democrats have been denying it and uh, Democratic politicians have been denying it. Democratic voters have been turning a blind eye to how the Democratic Party has been ignoring all the things that the people need. I mean, now is the time. I mean, it's been the time to push like 
where are the people? They kind of just sit back and they're reserved, right? They become passive about it. This is no longer the time to be passive about it. Millions of people are going to lose their jobs. Millions of people are going to lose their homes. We're coming to a point where, you know, this virus is going to get a lot fucking worse. And then now on top of that, we have a we have a vaccine that's uh, being proposed out there. I was just listening to a podcast with Whitney Webb where she was talking about uh, the issues with Pfizer. And, and the problem is that Pfizer is in the lead right now. And if Pfizer releases this, are they going <clears> to, <throat> you know, give it to the people or are they going to try to turn a profit? And if they try to turn a, turn a profit, what the fuck is the point of having this fucking vaccine? Not a whole lot, in my opinion, <clears throat> because you will still if, if people can't afford it to go get it and they have to make a choice between not having COVID-19 and feeding their kids, that's a shit choice. And you have a failed state. And that's what America is. America is a failed state right now. And they have an opportunity to fix that, but they won't choose it because their greed is more important than doing what's morally right. Let's look at some <laughs> Let's look at some of the comments. Uh, Douglas, welcome, Douglas. Good to see you. Uh, Dell Optiplex, me too, me too. Uh, I don't know what the Dell Optiplex is. Let, let me know what that is if you're still watching. Uh, Florida isn't locked down. Well, Florida, I'm I'm so sorry, jerk stork. Uh, jerk, is it jerk stork? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. I always like to call um, Florida the, the wang of America, and it's really not a surprise a lot of things that Florida does. You know, like it's just a, it's just being a dick and it's just like, oh, yeah, that's how dicks behave. <laughs> like they're not going to lock down in the middle of a pandemic. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because they're run by dicks. Uh, I'm so sorry. I hope I hope you're safe. I hope uh, the people around you are are safe and they're and they're continuing to stay safe uh, because that fucking sucks. Um, Douglas, when I was your age, I cared as much as you. Not anymore. I vote and forget about it. Life is important. And that's kind of the point. And it's kind of your point. I understand. <laughs> uh, yes, that, that is, that is the point. Um, I, you know, there are certain days when I, when I stop giving a shit and those are the bad days for me. Uh, those are really bad days when I just don't give a fuck about anything or anyone. But uh, no, I think it's important to care. And, and, and I hope that you will uh, get some kind of fervor back. You don't need to, I say this a lot. I've, I've talked about this a bunch is is you know um, you don't need to constantly be marching on the streets in order to make a difference. Uh, there's various ways to make a difference. I don't have it in me to 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 go out to protests and marches all the time, right? Like Graham Elwood fucking does that. Ron Placone does that a whole bunch. Um, part of it is accessibility. I I never know about it until it's already happening, and I'm like, fuck, I'm in bed, you know. Like, uh, but the other the other part of it is I get physically and emotionally drained very quickly by being in, in that environment because I can, I feel all the things that the other people are feeling. So my job ends up becoming amplification of these ideas, amplification of what really happened, talking to people that were there and shedding their light on their stories. So that's another way, right? Amplify, be, be the voice uh, to, to these movements so that people get an accurate story about it. Um, financially, you know, if you're financially well off, if you're, if you're doing okay, <clears throat> you know, put your money behind, um, individuals and movements that, uh, that you care about, that you feel is making a difference. Um, that's another way to help. Right. Or if you, if, if you just want to do it on your local. struggling we haven't been able to get grocery it's like boom got you covered i got that extra 50 bucks you know let's go grocery shopping get your mask let's do this thing uh little things like that can help and and the, and some of those little things really don't take that much energy or as much energy as you would think um you know just checking up on your friends every once in a while which i'm not particularly super awesome at all the time I know I know the last couple of weeks I haven't been and uh, I'm slowly getting back into that practice. <coughs> but yeah, I I I hope that you um you you get that enthusiasm back, Douglas. 
I like it. How about a Mohan Parfait ballot in four years? <laughs> I think it would have to be flipped because I'm I'm not a I'm a naturalized citizen. I'm not an actual citizen of the country, which means I can't run for president. But I can apparently run for other offices. I'm not going to because uh, um, I I like what party would I run under that I would actually like. You know, I will I will push to get more notoriety to more parties. That is something that I would do, but I <laughs> but I can't run underneath the Democratic Party because you can't shift that party from within. You can't make it better from within. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.